Greetings and welcome. We are now back with the uh, conversations regarding Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner and Senior AP English. I want to make some general observations about this poem. I'm actually going to begin at the end, though, uh, and then we'll kind of work our way backwards. As I already said to you, this is one of those really classic texts in the history of literature that also became very popular. In other words, People saw this as both a classic text, but they also saw it as just a great entertainment read, especially if you've got a really good reader sitting around the fire in 18 plus, you know, reading this story out loud. It can freak out because of the potentiality of the uh, imagination or whatever. It can kind of freak out a reader. I want to, though, begin by making some general observations about this poem. Let's begin by saying that there's kind of two types of poetry. One uh, is going to be a type of poetry that seeks to instruct. That is to say a pro paduta. In other words, when you finish the poem, you're supposed to understand something about the world. There, there needs to be some kind of moral to the story, if you will, okay? And, and that's one kind of poetry. The second kind of poetry is a poetry that seeks only to allow for the experience of language. We will put Kubla Khan in this category. When you pick up that poem to read that poem, you're not looking for messages at all, okay? What you're really looking for is Coleridge's ability, genius ability, to play games with words and sounds, all right? Now, as I've already said, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner is clearly a poem, instructional, didactic, propedeutic, inclining to teach you something, okay? So you're going to go all the way through this poem. You're going to hear the story about this guy uh, who went out on this, on this boat ride, and by the time he came back, he was not the same guy as when he left, okay? He's an old man now, and he's got to tell his story. How does he say he must tell his story? Right there at the end of the poem, he says it. How does he qualify it? Anybody figure this one out? Why does he have to tell the story? Right. This is a poem about redemption. This is a poem about being lost on a wide, wide sea and then salvation coming through the form of penance. Now, what is that? Are you familiar with that religious concept of penance? <coughs> to go into Catholic Church and make confession means what? That's right. You are looking to gain some kind of absolution, some kind of forgiveness for something that you've done. Okay? Now, what is it that the old man, telling the story, what is it that he did that required repentance? Now, see, that's interesting because the most obvious answer is he killed an albatross. Really? You shoot a bird out of the sky, and for that, you're cursed with the rest of your life, having to, as he says, go about all over the world, he says, and he looks into people's eyes, but he doesn't tell the story to everyone. Jot down in your notes, who does he tell the story to? Just like kid. People that don't love man and beast. Notice on page 817, the last two stanzas, he says, since then... At an uncertain hour. What does that seem to suggest, Miss Katie? At an uncertain hour. Can he predict when this... No! This is like Socrates and his daimon. Uh, I don't know if I said a lot about this in my lectures on Plato. But it's apparent from our studies of Symposium and elsewhere that Socrates believed that when the spirit moved him, he had this kind of connection with the other world, with his what he called daimon. And it was at that point that he then felt the most important truths came to him, and then he was able to disseminate or teach them to his uh, disciples, to his students, or whatever. Notice here, same kind of thing. He says, at an uncertain moment, at an uncertain hour, that, look what he calls it, agony returns. This is not bliss. This is not cathartic in the yay, but rather, I've got to get this out of me. And it's agonizing. Why do you think it's so agonizing? It's a creepy story. Yeah, it's a creepy story about being on a ship and all of your buddies die. And whether it's your fault or not, they say it's your fault. Dude, you're the reason we all die, but they don't decompose. 
Their eyes stay open and they lie on the deck of the ship looking right at you for an entire seven days. And you want to die, you can't die. So he says the story obviously elicits some agony for him. Until my ghastly tale is told, it's not a happy story, you know. This is important. The story that the mariner tells is not inclined. We think of Pirates of the Caribbean as a form of entertainment. Notice a shift, cultural shift here. This is a ghastly story. You're not supposed to go, oh, good, good, good. Tell me that story again. No, no, no. That's not the point. Oh, I like scary stories. Tell me the scary story about the scary ship where all the guys die and then they come back to life and they're actually working the ship. No, no, no. That's not this story. He doesn't see it as a happy story. That will be significant for us. Take a look at what he says next. He says, Then until, until my ghastly tale is told, this heart within me burns. In other words, what's he say? Does he have a choice to tell the story? No. It's like, right, this is an obligation. This is form of his penance. Remember early on, it's like he's done penance. He's going to do a lot more penance, right? At what point, book number, at what point does the albatross fall from his neck? Right? This is why we did that little bit of annotative work. What is significant about the albatross being hung around his neck to begin with? Why do they hang the albatross around his neck? Literally, it's punishment, right? Dude, you kill the albatross, we hit the doldrums, it's your fault. Well, now, of course, speaking in our science mind, we would say, really, killing a bird out of the sky is not the reason why the wind stopped blowing and the currents under the water stopped moving. It's called, you hit the doldrums, it's just the time of the year, blah, blah, blah. But these sailors see it as that. By the way, does the mariner see it as that? He does, doesn't he? He takes on the responsibility. He is, in some ways, like the scapegoat. He takes on the responsibility of doing what he did and then they put this thing around his neck. To have an albatross around your neck metaphorically then means what? To be guilty of something that was an innocent act originally, or a quasi-innocent act. If it wasn't innocent to shoot the albatross, he didn't have any idea what was coming. In other words, it's that moment when you do or say something that you think is not that big of a deal, and all of a sudden it blows up into, you know, we use the term drama, drama, drama. This is obviously the quintessential drama. All of his pals die, right? And he's the one stuck with it. It's his fault or whatever. So they hang this albatross around his neck. And part four, why does the albatross fall and what leads to the falling of the albatross? Do you remember? Right. He sees the beauty of nature, and instead of taking out his crossbow to shoot something, to kill it, he rather unawares does what? He blesses it, which means what? Like anybody that spent time on Sunday school to know what this means? What does it mean to bless something unawares? What's our P word for this? Pray, that's it, right. So we want to write it down. At the moment that he can pray, the albatross falls out of his neck, off his neck and, and sinks into the sea. Metaphorically, what does this mean? Right, right. We are ready to begin the process of redemption, of salvation, of forgiveness. The first step in the process then is what? What would you qualify it as? What's the first step in the process towards redemption for this poor guy? Repentance? Good, keep going. What's some other ways to say it? What would be the, uh, the, what would be the, uh, the word from, uh, from Plato's uh, philosophy? What do we call this? When appreciation of beauty or nature, what do we call it? You'll actually take a class in college, and it will be called an introduction to aesthetics. The capacity to appreciate or to respect nature. Now, this is a foundational romantic idea, right? It's... The power of appreciating the beauty and the force of nature. At the moment he can do that, instead of, hey, dude, there's a bird, let's shoot it. Rather, let's thank deity for it. That's that, that's that moment in part four. Then all of a sudden, it falls off. Now we're back to the end of this thing. He has to explain to this guy why it is he grabbed him, pulled him aside, made him sit down on a rock, and he had to tell him the story. I pass like night from land to land, I have strange power of speech. That moment that his face I see, I know the man that must hear me. To him I tell my tale I teach. What do you make of this? 
Why does he choose this young kid and use Republic Book 7, the cave allegory, to help you? Some of you will go, oh, do you remember the cave allegory? We have individuals chained up, unable to move. When the emancipator, the bringer of freedom, enters the darkness of the cave, to whom does he go? He doesn't go to one of the old, does he? Why does he go to one of the young in Plato's Republic? Why does he go to one of the young? Why the young? Remember, Plato himself will be accused, remember, in Apology. He's accused of corrupting the what? Not the old. He's accused of corrupting the youth. Goes to the young. The young are still capable of what? Of being taught. Yeah, being taught. What loud uproar bursts from that door. The wedding guests are there. Notice, now all of a sudden we're back to Warp Tour. It's like he's been extracted from this moment um, and he's been sitting outside a Warp Tour. They've been playing, but he hasn't been attending. And then all of a sudden it's like, whoa, the music's back. The party is about to begin. In other words, it's time, it's time for the kid to re-enter the world, right? O wedding guest, top of 818. This soul has been alone on a wide, wide sea. Obviously, lots and lots of metaphor playing games here. So lonely twas that God himself scarce seemed there to be. O oh, sweeter than the marriage feast, tis sweeter far to me to walk together to the kirk with a goodly company. If I tell you the word kirk is what word? It's, a, it's the word church, right? In other words, you have an interesting juxtaposition. On the one hand, go party. On the other hand, go to church. The old man says what to the young kid? Which is more important? Right, going to church with goodly company here seems to suggest take someone with you, right? To walk together to the kirk and all together, and there it is. Part four will make this all clear for us, right? And all together pray, while each to his great father bends old men and babes and loving friends and youths and maidens gay. And then the final lines, farewell, farewell, but this I tell to thee, thou wedding guests. Here is the point. These are the lines most memorized of this, of this uh, you know, poem. He prayeth well, who loveth well, both man and bird and beast. He prayeth best, who loveth best, all things both great and small. For the dear God who loveth us, he made and loveth all. All right, let's put it in a line. What is it? What are you supposed to learn from this poem? I mean, you just read it. God loves Keep going. The love of God obviously is central to this, night, to this notion, but it seems like we're missing something by just simply saying that. Love all, things all things are equal in that value system. In other words, an arbitrary act like killing some insignificant element of nature is condemned in this poem because all of nature is sacred. Right? Right? So, obviously, the question is, the taking of life in this poem is deemed, then, really significant. An arbitrary act, like the taking of life, has long-term implications. Obviously, there are a lot of environmental reads of this poem. Long into the 20th century, this poem continues to be read as being evidence of that predictive voice, uh, prophetic voice of Coleridge. Come back tomorrow and we'll finish up. And I want to 